Good evening, everybody. How are we? How's everybody doing? Ever since I started uh, trying out Red Dead Online, I've been getting these, these things when I start up the game. Oh, and also it loads me into online. I don't think I've played online since the last time I streamed this last week, but it's weird. Oh well, it's pretty neat. I made me fairly accurately, I would think, in the game, so maybe we'll do that someday. Uh, maybe between the actual main game and the epilogue, if like the, the that last stream doesn't go long enough, we can play online for an hour or something like that. Maybe you guys can join me, that sort of thing. That would be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Right. Oh, you guys can hear the crunch, can't you? I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I guess that was the only one I get. <laughs> All right. So anyway. Now the people are trickling in. How are we doing? Mm. So yeah. Anyway, so I got stuff, I got cool stuff to talk about, hopefully. Um, I don't know how much, um, how much I'm going to talk about the game and how much I'm going to talk about some other stuff, like class stuff, because I got cool stuff going on in classes right now that I'm kind of psyched to talk about, um, even beyond just in the classroom. So, uh, that could be a hell of a lot of fun, uh, if we, uh, we wanted to chat about stuff like that. So, um, a couple of, a uh, couple of things that are just like, uh, so we're reading... We are reading this book. Uh, that would be How to Live a Good Life by uh, Massimo Pigliucci et al. Um, he's the editor. It's a collection of essays on different ways of living, different life philosophies. It's a little bit indifferentist to my taste. Right? Saying, hey, here are some options, as if presenting him like a menu, but I don't think that's his intention. I just think that's how the format of this kind of book um, kind of kind of what it lends itself to, unfortunately, which is which is unfortunate because the essays within are actually, uh, so far, what I've read, because um, I'm kind of reading it through it with the class, I'm, I'm intending to sort of not, um, not get too far ahead of the class uh, in those terms, because I want to kind of experience it along with them. Um, but it's, uh, it is a little bit indifferentist, but it's not too bad. The actual essays within are, uh, are actually very good, so definitely been enjoying it so far um of course there are <laughs> even so far there have been a couple of uh of almost comical um errors and misunderstandings that i definitely want to point to uh either here or you know, i might read some of it to you if, if while we're you know, riding through somewhere or something like that um just kind of point out that kind of thing so um it's almost embarrassing in a couple of places they're only they're only minor things but um for the most part, only minor things, but uh, but they're but they're definitely worth noting and should be noticed. Anyway, all right. So now that we get people coming in, let's uh, get back into things. Also, kind of want to uh, want to chat with you guys and see what you might what input you guys might have in terms of uh, what to assign in sort of in tandem what we should talk about actually in class in tandem I want to run some ideas by you know by my you know friends fans students etc you guys um, and see uh, see what you think about uh, tentative tentative ideas for what I might want to bring into the classroom Sorry I was a little bit uh, either later, I guess, yeah, I was a little bit late. Uh, sorry about that, my light bulb exploded. Of me. Had to replace the damn thing. Um, I just did, um, but uh, I think the I think we're getting to the point where new wiring is, is uh, starting to strongly prefer um, LEDs to uh, 
to you know old style light bulbs. I'm a little bit disappointed by that, but I also just I don't really mind LEDs. Um, I'm v I'm so incredibly glad that uh, the compact fluorescent trend went by the wayside. Like I'm so glad that died. Ah, okay. It says I'm good. Am I good? Oh lordy, I am way behind or something. Huh. All right, there we go. All right, great. I think we're back. Let me know if uh, let me know if I'm still um, still laggy or buggy or anything. It's, uh, hopefully not. Hopefully that solved the problem. I think it was my streaming software did something weird. Oh um. Oh no, Erica, you should be fine. It's uh, it's not online or anything, so it shouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't think. Uh, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't my connection. It was um, that was my software. My my software bugged for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay, my girl. All right. Anyway, sorry about all that. Uh, also, at Foundry. Um, so speaking of, um, well, I just recently, uh, Erica and I just got uh, some really cool new software um, for tabletop gaming. I have a new virtual tabletop. Basically, um, I don't know if you, if any of you have played a uh, uh, played D and D or the equivalent online. You've probably used Roll Twenty because it's the free free good version uh, of a virtual tabletop. We recently got a uh, new program called Foundry, which is very complicated, but I like it very much. Get up. Yeah, I like it very much, at least so far. I haven't actually gotten to play a game on it yet, but I will be, uh, it will be this weekend. So it'll be a lot of fun. I, I have to set up some uh, some internet one. stuff for it, but it should be good. And we're back on we're back with her, so this will be good. Oh, hey there. How you feeling, ma'am? Much better than I felt in a long time. I, if we hadn't caught that rabbit, I don't think I'd have made it another day. You look better. Better and determined, thanks to you. And if I'm gonna learn to hunt, I figured it was time I learned how to use Cal's gun properly. And how's that working out for you? Well, let's just say my prey is looking decidedly unscathed. <laughs> but the end of labor is to gain leisure. Is that not what Aristotle said? No, well, I, I don't know much about Aristotle, but... Um... Well, I know a thing or two about shooting a gun. It is but what Aristotle said. You gotta hold steady and firm. Hmm? You just focus, breathe slowly, and always pull the trigger on empty lungs. Here, I'll show you. Okay. Come. Thanks for being careful. Don't snatch at the trigger. And... Oh, I thought I, I thought I screwed it up. Okay. <laughs> that was distracting. You make it look so easy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Right. All right. You try now. Remember to breathe. Wait to breathe out. Wait to breathe out. Closer. Uh, would you look at that? I haven't hit one that close all day. <laughs> Not bad. Focus on the inhale. Shoot on the exhale. My turn. I'll shoot a few more this time. Let's go two for one. See if we can do it. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, that wretched rat is back. Over there, you see? been a thorn on my side ever since we moved here. Kill it, Long. please. Where'd it go? Three. Uh, got away. I told you it was fast. Ah. Anyway, my turn. Come on, come on. There we go. Yes. Nice. I hit it. I hit it, didn't I? <laughs> oh, 
what can I say? Thank you. But I still have some of the rabbit left that I salted up. Would you join me for a meal? It's the least I can do. Move that way. There we go. All right. Take a seat at the table. Food is just about done. Oh. <laughs> well, it's, it's good and hot. I hope you enjoy it. You helped me to catch it, after all. <laughs> bon appetit. Oh. Please enjoy. And thank you again for everything. I really am grateful. Uh, it was nothing. You're a good man. Well, you don't really know me. I know enough. There's always more to find in ourselves. You helped me to see that. My husband, Cal, was such an optimist. I found that to be very contagious. But there's a fine line between optimism and naivete. And you were both born with a silver spoon, banquets, butlers, valets. <laughs> Black fork and knife there? There's just really? so many people, so many things. I was lost in it. I was crushed by it. My father was very uh -oh. overbearing. Then we came out here and I got crushed by this. You know, I pictured myself Picking fresh vegetables, sipping homemade wine, writing a great novel. But I turned out to be a far more pathetic anti-heroine than any I could ever pen. Oh, well. <clears throat> I reckon you're gonna be just fine. Are you all right? Can I get you some water? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I just, um... <clears throat> Uh-oh. This would be the tuberculosis. Yeah, thank you for this. I think it's it's best if I if I make. Stay right there. It's, it's gonna be okay. Oh, that was blood. That's not good. My dear Arthur, I have gone out hunting. Not a phrase I thought any pen of mine would ever ink, but nonetheless one I am very proud to finally be able to write. I am so very grateful to you for all the help and encouragement you've given me. There is some money in a box on the nightstand. Please take it. I have far more than I need back in the city, and I'd like you to have it. Please take care, and remain true to the man I know you are. Isn't that nice? Sure. Hundred dollars, not bad. All right. In that case, let's be moving on. Hopefully, uh, not dying just yet. Soon, but not yet. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, that was, uh, I forget if there is more, um, to her story. Um, I know there's at least one more thing, but it might have to be during the epilogue, so it might be in a while. Um, ah, Hamish. Let's go hunting with Hamish. Hunting with Hamish, and then we will help out Rainsfall. How about Rain's Fall? Yeah. And go meet with uh, Sadie about a hanging. And we can watch Colmo Driscoll's legs kick for the last time. 
Hopefully. All right. All right. So, meanwhile, on the way, while we're on our way there, um, so, a few of the things I've got coming are, uh, coming up in class-wise, uh, that I was kind of wanting to talk about. So next week, uh, we are, um, our next kind of topic of discussion, because we're talking about sort of intentional ways of living, uh, life philosophies, ways of seeing the world, that kind of thing. It'd be neat. Um, and like I was saying, this um, the book I was mentioning, this one here, right, how to give how to live a good life, is very anthology like. It it, it has several chapters um, uh, or several sections, each with a few chapters dedicated to a way of living uh, or a sort of life philosophy. So it's got uh, ancient philosophies of the uh, of the East, uh, and it, I mean Far East, not uh, not East like I often mean it. Um, so Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism. Uh, and we're going to be talking about Confucianism next week. Um, we talked about Aristotelianism last week. Uh, and to that end, we talked a bit about uh, Aristotle's idea of beauty in the context of objectivity, in the context of natural law, all of that. It was a good time. It was a good talk. And I'm probably going to want to um, bring up some of that as well, because as I mentioned in Roger Scruton's uh, documentary, I mentioned that on Monday. Uh, so we wound up discussing that on Wednesday. That was a lively discussion. They could at least cert for, uh, say that for certain. Um, in any case, though, right? So our our discussion of Confucianism is. We'll, we'll see how this winds up going because I'm actually curious to see, and we'll, I'll talk about it more in sort of in retrospect on Monday. Um, but I want to talk about it a little bit in advance tonight, um, in part because my um, my associated text assignment for our discussion for next Wednesday is still up in the air a little bit. I have some ideas. Um, but I'm really, um, I don't know yet, for sure. I gotta think it through. Um, because it is, um, the emphasis was on uh, what I didn't expect. I've, I know, I'm, I know relatively little about Confucianism. Um, I've studied Taoism a little bit. I've studied Buddhism a little bit. I've even studied legalism a very little bit. Ah, uh, that's, okay, hold on. I need to focus because there's a bear. My horse is going to flip if it hears it. Chi? Who am I right? Anyway. Hopefully that is, uh, okay, I think the danger is passed, but I'm almost a Hamish. Um, in any case, though, right, what I was saying, um, I've, I've studied very little Confucianism, and... From what I from what I read here, and I haven't read much um, much beyond this as of yet, I'm probably going to be doing some extra research on it over the weekend, uh, so I can give myself some, uh, some additional perspective. Um, but based on the description here, based on a lot of the citations and things being said and whatnot, uh, it's very oof. <laughs> cool. Uh, it is very. Um, It's almost Aristotelian, in a lot of sense, in a lot of ways. I'll, I'll say what I mean in just a bit. Hamish, Arthur, <laughs> come in. You said uh, we could go for a hunt. I did. There's this huge she-wolf been stalking me the last few nights I've been out, but she can wait. Mm. Let's talk a while. Sure. So what do you do? Me? Uh, I'm a wanderer. I was born further north, but I spent a lot of time out west. It's funny. I never saw myself as a wanderer, man. Man, I'd actually like to hear the Arthur tell his so life thick, story, you know? You could have walked across the whole field without your boots touching mud. <sighs> Those were bad times. Yes, they were. Would you like some more coffee? Please. Ooh -wee. <laughs> what have we here? Oh, well, well. Yeah, she's right across there. That close. Oh, 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 oh. She's acting brazen. <gasps> Big old wolf. Let's mount up.
Come on. She went around to the left. Around the lake. She's down here somewhere. Time for things to definitely not go wrong. Alright. Keep up! Right? Gotta get her while she's here. Wolves shouldn't come so close to people. Yeah, strange. When the whole country was wild, they could go where they liked. Oof. Now they're stuck hiding in the few corners of wilderness we got left. It's a feeling with which I can sympathize. Yeah. This ain't a country for wild animals, nor wild men, neither. Not anymore, it seems. You hear that? Yep. Quickly now. This way. Up there. On the outcrop. You see her? Let's go around it. Okay, I'm with you. We're on to her. Come on. Okay. All right. Let's go Man. hunt us a wolf. I can't see her. Let's get up to the top. Have a look around from up there. Mule loves hills, don't you, boy? You eat them up for breakfast. Whoa, there. What we got here? Is that a fresh kill? Could be. Is the blood set? Let me take a look. Howdy, Kevin. Good to see ya. How are things? Yep. That was her dinner. Now, where'd she get to? Oh, looks like it was far from the first kill up here. My guess. The moose? She's gone somewhere over there. Well. Uh, there's a whole lot of over there. That's the problem. Hmm. There she is. Got shy all of a sudden. You got some extra muck? Wasn't here tonight. Oh, if we gotta chase her. Let's chase her. All right. Come on. And the sound of that gun. That is one heck of a sounding gun. Especially for like a little repeater. That's crazy. Let's go. All right. Damn it. Too slow. It looks like she's headed into the woodland. We're gonna have to track her through the scrub. Better to be on foot. Send your horse somewhere safe. Get going, girl. There's a wolf about. You went in there, all right. We gotta track her. Now you wanna take the lead or shall I? Uh, go ahead. I'd prefer if you did it, if that's all right. Okay, I'll track her. Stick to me. Got the trail. This way. All right, Kevin says, oh, I'm off for two days, starting now, and full of meat chili. Keep behind me. Is there any other kind of chili? I mean, I know there is, but there shouldn't. I don't know if there should be. I think chili necessarily involves meat. Uh, otherwise, it's just beans. Keep your gun out, just in case. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I am going to switch to the repeater. We can get some uh, nice clean kills. Well, ideally, at least. Unless I die, but you never know. Should be fine. She could be a half mile in front of us, or behind that next bush. Hmm. Your eyes up, okay? I got mine in the dirt. Alright, so. I was saying uh, that uh, next week we're going to be talking some about Confucianism in, uh, in class. Uh, and what struck me reading about this, and like I said, I haven't done too much research before in Confucianism, struck me is how close it was to, um, to Aristotle's view, especially Aristotle's view of man as a social animal. Um, Confucianism, uh, as depicted here, and again, this is um, this is uh, one description. So this is not uh, this is obviously not, uh, not you know total Isaac or anything. Hey, up there, is that the she wolf? Uh, let's see. Um, focuses very much on human beings and human relationships. Hmm. 
Right. Did I shoot it in the butt? Jesus, okay, here we go. Uh oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. Okay. That's not good. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, let's try that again. Kevin's like, I, some, I like some beans and chili, but can't do it on account of carbs. Well, that's terrible. Ah, oh, Jesus. Let's go with it. Oh my god. Okay, come on. Damn it. Whoa. You all right? Whew. Okay. I was ready to offer my complete and unconditional. Yeah, I don't think the wolves would have shown much mercy. <laughs> oh my god. That's quite an ambush she let us into. Yeah, bushwhacking, I'd call it. Huh? Over here! Over here! Okay, that's that's just great. You all right? Huh. Yeah. Damn. Big yeah. son of a bitch. Is that all of them? That's the best of them. Look at them. Proud oh, thing. Scary thing. <laughs> all right. They brought us here to be slaughtered. You were after a hunt. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess I got hunted. <laughs> you going back to the oh. cabin? Yeah, nah. Still early. We'll stay up here a while. Dress this animal. I won't likely see another like him for some time. Yeah, I hope I won't <laughs> need Thanks for taking me out. Yeah, anytime. You want to go out again? Yeah. You come by and see me. So long, then. Yeah. Wait. Here's a pelt. Thank you. Uh, you earned it. Ow. 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 <laughs> oh, God. Oh, jeez. Erica says, it's okay, you're distracting them so he can shoot them. Yeah, no kidding. Be nice if I could distract them with something other than my arm. I'm, I'm, I'm apparently hungry. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat some game meat. So let's do that. <coughs> Oh, but I'm sick, but that's okay. Oh my god. Alright, well that was fun. Anyway. On a related kind of note. You gotta be to get this big. On a related note. Um, my other D&D game, the one that we're going to be using Boundary for. Um, I feel relatively safe saying this because as far as I know, I'm fairly certain that I've been watching my streams, at least not live. Um, we're doing some werewolf hunting. Uh, and that is going to be a heck of a lot of fun because it is going to lead into something much more significant. Um, uh, this is going to lead us right into the Misty Forest, through the mists, and into the land of Barovia. We're starting Curse of Strahd this week, which will be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of, that'll be definitely a good time. Um, Kevin says the arm might be the better option. Uh, I mean, it's better than, like, the throat. That's definitely for sure. So, I guess it could be worse. It almost was worse with the big she-wolf at the end there. That was almost worse. Anyway. Yeah. Alright, none of these pelts were actually very good because I was just, like, spraying bullets into them, unfortunately, but that's okay. All right, Moose. Get out of here. Go to... Go to Rainsfall.
Oh, Adler Ranch. It's Sadie's old house. Basically where we started. Oh. All right. Let's get up that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, make buttonholes in the sleeves, I guess, Kevin. That's a fair point. We'll do it. I wonder if I can actually bushwhack through all this to get up to that road. The railroad track, but I think it's, I think it's in a tunnel underneath me. Yeah, I know, Moose. I'm sorry. Come on. Come on! Nope, not gonna work. Okay, that's fine. That was weird, but okay, let's do it. I know this isn't Skyrim. I can tell. Because my, my horse is not scaling a vertical surface. What the heck was that? A snake or something, maybe. Alright. Anyway. Alright. Um, what do I just need to do? Oh, I need my hat. That's right. Nice. Kevin says, I'm going uh, bow hunting for deer first time this year. Don't let them eat you. I don't think they will, but you never know. Never know. Man, my, uh, I don't know if everyone is, uh, if everyone's just jumping in and out or something, but my stream statistics, uh, little feed on YouTube is just giving me all sorts of wacky data. Like, it's jumping up and down between, like, nine and one. Popping back and forth for some reason. I don't know what's up, but okay. Oh, what's all this? That's something. Oh, it's the herbalist guy. All right, let's go talk to him. Let's do this. Would you be able to help me out again? Uh, yeah. I could use some assistance gathering herbs for my studies. Okay. It says we're back. Okay, yeah, we're back. Alright, cool. That was weird. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, neat. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. You cursed it. Oh, yeah. Areas for more. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, the, 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 uh, current viewers thing is just now popped back up, and it looks like it has Those been up the whole time. Take some searching, I'd get started. Nah, I got him. Found him elsewhere. Um, there you go. Nice. Let's try this. Yeah, it's just jumping all over the place. I'm just not going to trust the damn thing. <laughs> Whatever. It's fine. Hmm. Oh, yes. I feel ready to take on the world. I'll have trouble sleeping tonight. The man oh, could go for days on it. this. You've had some long ones, I'm sure. Some sage may just be what you need. Hmm. All right. You've been a great help. I'd like to give you this recipe as a sign of a preparedness for long journeys. And hold on tight. Your horse will never want to stop running. All now, right, if you then. don't mind, I'll be getting back to my studies. I look forward to our next right. meeting, Old Travis. Russian sage. All right, cool. Let's, um away nice all right cool all right so kevin don't curse the stream again and i think we'll be okay um okay, if it isn't right. kevin though i'm pretty sure it's my streaming software being buggy and uh, i don't know what's going on with that tonight but uh i don't know i may um i might uh, need to check for an update on obs or something like that who knows who can ever be sure of such things anyway like I said, one of the things that we're uh, we're going to be talking about, and this is something I was, uh, was just mentioning, uh, was we are um, we're reading to talk about Confucianism, and I was saying how strikingly similar it was to Aristotle as uh, considering the human being as a social animal, especially, um, and talking about our interaction with and our participation in society and our relationships and the importance of the particularity of our relationships. Uh, that we have with other people, um, you know, 
having um, ah, here we go, the uh, observation. Um, having particular uh, obligations, right? Ethical obligations uh, to particular people based on our relationship to them, um, and these are being these being you know innate, intrinsic kinds of obligations, not not you know voluntarily or socially taken on or anything like that. Right? Uh, these relationships again are are or at least the obligations that stem from relationships are innate. They're, you know, you have filial obligations to one's parents. You have, um, you have an obligation to participate in and to uh, to benefit one's society, right? All these things, right? And meanwhile, the whole time, I'm thinking, hey, look, Aristotle. Aristotle of roughly the same time, fascinatingly enough, around the 4th century BC, um, just halfway across the world. It's, uh, it's, I, I love seeing synchronicity like that, uh, across the world in, in philosophy. It, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, it is a, um, the, the synchronicity of it is an interesting phenomenon. Um, but even the, uh, even the, the sort of, hmm, except for that, even the philosophy of itself is, uh, is uh, much more than I had really given it uh, credit for in the past. Um, I I hadn't given much thought to Confucianism. I sort of conflated it with legalism, which um, and that's because the last time I seriously studied Confucianism really at all was was um, early undergrad, and it was just sort of alongside <coughs> uh, alongside other ancient Chinese philosophies, and so I didn't give it much enough thought then. I don't think. Um, and certainly not with the perspective I have now on, on classical Western thought. Hello? Come in. <coughs> you don't sound very well. I'm not. I'm, I think I'm dying. Then I hope you find peace. I don't know too much about peace. Apparently not. Did you have fun with my son, the impetuous prince? I believe you went on a raid with him. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I suppose I lack the grandeur of a conventional king. I don't know too many kings. Colonel Favors. He has already exacted some measure of revenge for the raid. Two women were assaulted by his men. Um, I'm very sorry about all of this. Yes. Sometimes the correct path, the bravest path, is the least obvious and also the gentlest. I'm... I'm a great disappointment to my son. Your son seems to want a war. My son thinks there is glory in death. Maybe he's right. But for me, I saw death being handed out so freely by the most foolish of men, I never could equate it with victory. Glory has come in service. Maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. I've killed a lot of people. For a whole lot of dumb reasons, and I ain't never seen much glory in it. Well, your friend, Mr. Vanderlyn, he talks a lot. I don't know him, but my son is easily lit. I'm not sure I get you. Uh, well, perhaps we could go for a ride. I'm an old man. My whole life I've tried to bring peace. But uh, I ain't doing so good. Then maybe you can take pity on my plight. Please, it won't take long. <coughs> and maybe I can help you with that cough. Sir! Hmm. Glad I caught you, sir. Big old charger. Captain Monroe, do you know my friend, Mr. Morgan? No, sir. I don't have the pleasure. Arthur Morgan. It's an honor, sir. How can I help you, Captain? It's an honor. I was just in hmm. San Denis. I spoke with the mayor. It's not good news, I'm afraid. May I ride with you for a little? Of course. Follow me. So where are we going? I want to show you a site up in the mountains that's long been sacred to me. A place for reflection and healing. Yeah! Really like Rainsfall. He's a 
really cool character. Passing you. What is this news, Captain Monroe? Yes, sir. As I mentioned, I did speak again with the mayor and the Bureau of Indian Affairs in San Denis at length. But regrettably, it appears the oil company has already received approval to move forward with drilling on the reservation's land. I suppose there's much. So what does that mean for us now? I'm not sure just yet. I didn't get the impression anything would be happening for a few months. I'm very sorry, sir. I did everything I could. I know, Captain. And I assure you I will continue to do as much as I can. Mr. Morgan, would you have time to help me at all? I would rather certain actions were taken by friends outside the tribe. Yeah, sure, let's I do it. Help. That's good news. I hear Thank a bear you. again. Come meet me on the reservation whenever you can. Even right. just a couple of hours of your time. Okay, we can do that. <clears throat> Kevin asked, do you reckon that synchronicity and supernatural or preternatural causation? Like it was anyway, cosmically gentlemen, purposeful for similar philosophies to time. develop closely like that. I'll see you both soon. Sure. Um, Thank you, Captain. Possibly? Enjoy the ride. Uh, and I can think of why or how. Continue on this way. I'm going to look for some herbs to give you. I really like that. I like his, um, I like his accent and voice actor as well. Um, yeah, I think there is, uh, there's a, there's a few ways that it can be explained. One is, is simply uh, on a, an almost completely natural level. See I say the almost. Over there feasting on that horse? Brutality and beauty are both all around us. Yet so often we're unable to see past our own grievances. This is what I try to teach my son. This guy. I'm going to try and let him talk, but I'm also going to try and talk in between, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. There was no need to harm them. Oh, it's okay. 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 Fine. We can talk if you want, Mr. Morgan. But don't feel like you have to. Are you all right back there? Yeah, 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 yeah. My horse was kind of spooked. It's best we stay together now. Now, as I was saying, it's a beautiful ride ahead if you need some time to think. What about Dutch? How much you know about Dutch? A little. Mostly what Charles told me. For years. He was the best man I knew. But... He's been unraveling for some time now, and I ain't sure there's any going back at this point. It took a long time for me to learn that you could never change a person. We only become more who we really are. Sorry, uh, hold up a moment. That'll have to wait. Some of the plants I need will be growing down Ooh, here. Ooh, Erica says, uh... I'm hoping that when we reach Oakvale, Rain's fall and his son matches the chief and his daughter. That sounds great. I really like that. That is a really good. That's a really good uh, character inspiration parallel thing. I like it. That's great. Anyway, but yeah. So I was talking about, um, and that's that's again that's about our other D and D game. Um, but that should be yeah. That should be a really good. Uh, that sounds like really good character inspiration. Um, I can try and get his voice down okay. here if you want me to for Let's the for the game. So I was saying, uh, or something like it at least. More who we really are. Perhaps you see that with him, just as I see it with my son. Dutch has got this crazy plan that if we create enough noise and chaos. We'll be able to escape and go somewhere far away where no one will find us. I worry a lot of folks are gonna get caught in the crossfire, including eagle flies. Mm. So what can we do? I ain't quite sure. Just wanted you to know the situation. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Erica says I don't. It's problems. fine. I don't need my codium um, upstaging me with accents. Up ahead. But the views are beautiful from up here. You know, I had a son once, years ago. Don't talk about him much. 
Oh, what was his name? Isaac. His mother, Eliza, was a waitress I met. When she got pregnant, she, she knew who I was, what my life was. I didn't want to promise nothing I couldn't keep, but I said I'd do right by the... Wait, stop here. I want to pick some ginseng. Uh -huh. We can talk more about this later. But I want to talk about this. I was right in the middle of, like... Arthur was right in the middle of, like, pouring his heart out here. You're like, hold on, ginseng. <sighs> okay, go to herbs or whatever. Anyway. Combine well. Fine. But yeah, this is the only time in, these, in, in the entire game that Arthur talks about his son. This is literally it. It's just right here. Um, it's the only time he tells this story to anybody. I don't even know if, like, Wait if the there. rest of the gang I'll know. I'll put these in your saddlebag. Mix these together. They taste awful. But it'll help to keep your strength up. Mason ginseng, that sounds that does sound pretty All awful. Alright, let's go. It's not much further now. It does sound so, terrible. What were you talking about before? I didn't want to promise nothing I couldn't keep, but I said I'd do right by them. Every few months I'd stop by there for a few days. He was such a good kid. She was too, I guess. <laughs> Just a kid. Nineteen. What happened? I got there one day and saw two crosses outside. I knew right away. Turned out some bastards had come through. Robbed them. Shot them dead. And offered ten dollars. Hardened me. Feeling that kind of pain. But I know now that you don't get to live a bad life and have good things happen to you. I think you're being hard on yourself. Maybe. All I can do now is try and make some things right. I appreciate the herbs, but I think it's gonna take more than that. I saw a doctor and he says I'm in a pretty bad way. I'm sorry to hear that. This situation we're in, me, Dutch, and the others, I don't know how long I got, but some of them, they still got a chance to have a life. I just think it, if I could give them that, then hmm. maybe this ain't all for nothing. I think there is much you can still do, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, this is definitely the most introspective that Arthur gets throughout. Uh, this is good. Really good. Good that he got to, uh, got to kind of settle through some of that. Anyway, so, um, this idea of synchronicity. It's part of it is, uh, part of it probably, uh, has something to do with, with, you know, intellectual trends that sort of coincide no. at different places. It can't be. Uh, uh, sort of coincide in different places. So it's similar to, uh, the sort of co-discovery of the calculus by, uh, by Newton and Leibniz. No! Um, which almost certainly was because know. there was um, who, who the this? same information around and so multiple people Someone found who it. Do enrage you. Oh yeah. Help me look around, please. The Tanupa is gone. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Arthur doesn't know what that is, at least. So, that's okay. Of course. Um, what is it? Oh, yeah, there you go. There must be some clues to what happened here. Erica says, Reigns is the most neutral and wise party he could to talk to. And he has an air of, con uh, of confidentiality that I think it's the best time for Arthur to be open. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think that's a good... Uh, I think that's a pretty good analysis of, uh, of you know why he's why he's so willing to talk to somebody um, that he otherwise doesn't really know. Animals. Whiskey. <laughs> Bastards are having a party up here. Let's 
see. Flask. There's some whiskey here. Okay. Let me give this some more thought. Moonshine. Thank you. Need that. Mr. Morgan. Well, look at this. This. What's this? Logs. An empty bottle of whiskey. Well, yeah, well, if we drank but... all that, they couldn't have gone too far. Hmm. Yeah, well. Uh, there's some logs here they must have used as kindling. Yeah, Erica says this is way too much of a setup. Yeah, I agree. It's not an ambush, clearly. Uh, but it's definitely, you know, trying to make... Trying to make Rains fall angry. And certainly trying to make the rest of the tribe angry. This is pretty much certain to, uh... Uh, to make eagle flies fly off the handle. That's the whole point. That's got it. That's... Rains fall! Over here! Think I see an army camp. Here we go. Yep. Oh, there they are. These brave men. Hmm. Some of Colonel Favor's men. They must have been the ones who did this. Are you surprised this happened? Not at all. But... But I hope we were past this. Well, you got land they want. Land with oil. They moved us here. They've taken everything we had. I signed three treaties myself, and they've broken each one. Now they've taken the last hope. Now my people are going to want a war. A war they can't win. Not if I get it back. Get it back? Yeah, I'm gonna go in, get your chin up, and no one will be any the wiser. Would you do that? Well, you can't go. They know why you'd come. I, uh... Don't have any money. No, I don't need your money. Alright. Well, I'm gonna get a rifle. <laughs> Just in case. Our sacred item. Oh, well, try not to hurt anyone. Well, if you say so. Fine. In case I need to, I'd still up my sidearms. Um, Erica, this is a solid point, so this is actually interesting. I don't rem says, I don't remember how it goes, uh, but I would blame Eagle Flies more than the army. Like, to try and frame the army. Possibly. I don't actually remember if there is, um, if that is a possibility as to what's happening. Um, it could be. Also, I mean, at the same time, though, even if it isn't, right... I mean, if it if it is though, that's not smart of him. But he's certainly. I mean, he's looking for an excuse, right? Eagle flies is looking for an excuse to try and fight, to try and fight, right? And of course, here is one, like perfectly gift wrapped. Or oh, that's actually another good point. Dutch using the Native Americans to stir up trouble and smoke to kind of cover everything. Yeah, that's another good point. That's the problem. Monroe went to West Point. Neighbors never made it. Huh. Yeah. I'm sure. Right, well, let's do some searching. Engines. It just seems so silly, though. You know, who wants to fight them? Who cares? My uncle married an Indian anyway. She seemed nice enough. An Indian? Sure looked like one. I'm up near the Canadian border someplace. Camden? They got Indians in Camden. Tons of them. The French folk, too. No. Is France near Camden then? <laughs> no. France is near... <laughs> is near France. Well, it's in France. Indians is from here. Where are you from? Me? I'm Polish. From Milwaukee. Hmm. 
it's uh, right up near WizKids neck of the woods, if I remember right. Ish. I mean, you know, that area of the country. What's that? Uh oh. Good. Over here. Take your hands off, Eric. This is where you die. All right, you know what? I'm gonna just do this the hard way. Let's go for it. This is such a bad idea. This is not how this is supposed to go. I'm gonna try this again. Can I? How? How? How do I do that? No, it's not a not an autosave. Okay, I have to get shot a bunch in order to do that. So I'm just gonna shoot a bunch. I'm gonna punch people and see if that works. All right, there we go. That's what I thought. Let's try from a checkpoint and not be caught. Let's go all the way around because I think it's right in that chest, if I remember right. And if I got to knife somebody, I got to knife somebody. But like one guy, not everybody. Listen, it is entirely, listen, Kevin, it is entirely possible to hog tie the whole company if you're careful enough and you position it right. To be fair, it's also entirely possible to sit up on the ridge and just snipe everyone, but, you know, Rain's Fall said don't do that. So I'm gonna not do that. Okay. Let's creep and sneak. What's that? Oops, that's not good. Somebody's going to walk out here. I'm going to rope them. It's probably not going to work, is it? Let's keep it expanded. Hi, Kylie. We are helping uh, Chief Rains Fall recover his sacred Chinupa uh, that the army probably stole. Or near the army camp. But they probably stole it too. I attract his attention. Hey, I heard something. Something's over here. Uh oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Alright, I have an idea. Wait, where is it? I could have sworn there was dynamite around here. Okay, never mind. Let's try again. Let's try again. I'm supposed to be nice about this and not just shoot all of them. Anyway, let's try. All right. I wonder if I just like sprint past, draw off one of their attention, they'll come running. Hog time in the woods, and do it again. Hey, right, this should be. I heard something. 
He didn't. Oh, come on. Well, I can't do that quietly, apparently. Nah, it's fine. You know what? I'm just gonna hogtie the whole camp. Alright, this isn't gonna work, is it? I'm gonna have to, like, stealth knockout thing? This is a thing to do. Alright, I can do this. This is so stupid, but I can do it. Alright. This has gotta be a challenge, right? This is this is an achievement. Alright, hold on. About to get shot one more time, then I can take a quick tonic. Oh Jesus. Let's let's try again. I can do this. I'm committed to this. Meanwhile, yeah, Skyrim logic would work. I can go back to sneaking. The problem is I don't exactly know where I need to sneak. If I knew where I needed to sneak, this would be much easier. I think maybe I can just sneak up behind somebody and punch them. I'm gonna. I might try that. We'll see. I died because I'm letting him kill me, so I can get this done without killing anybody. That's my goal. Uh, yeah, Kyla, just, just to explain, like, I am I am intentionally letting them kill me. Uh, hey, I heard so. Darn it. Okay, let's... You heard something, but... You're not going to investigate or anything. Okay. Fine. Alright, he's keeping moving. Alright, we're good. We're good. Sharpening a knife. Or if I can knock him out. Probably. Oh yeah, I probably could do that, couldn't I? I could, like throw something as a distraction, I bet. There's some dynamite. Oh, this works. Okay. Shh. That works. Okay, I can do this. So I can stealth knock out. This is news. This is a novel development. There's also dynamite under here. That's nice. Oh, oh shit, there he is. Okay, I didn't see that guy. Here we go, here we go. Shh. Ah, oh, I hit the wrong. Come on, shoot me. Yay! Is that other dynamite? I'm gonna shoot it. Okay, never mind. Okay, this will work in principle. I can do this because I think it's right there. I think the chest right there is what I'm after. All right, we're this close. We're this close, ladies and gentlemen. We can do this. One more try, I hope. Anyway, while I do this, because I, you know, I'm. Uh, Have some food. I think my health core is going down. All right, cool. So, anyway, while we're doing this, I want to talk about synchronicity because I didn't finish talking about that. On the one hand, like I was saying, you have a more or less naturalistic explanation, in uh, which is that uh, you know we have these uh, you know synchronous discoveries and synchronous thought, and synchronous events, and all of this, um, not particularly for a supernatural reason, 
Um, but because people are in the same intellectual milieu. Right? Turned around, bastard. Okay, fine. Gotta wait. Okay. Wait. Um that explains things like how calculus was discovered simultaneously by um, by Leibniz and Newton, who had no knowledge of each other's work. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't, and I wouldn't want to say that is supernatural exactly, but it does speak to a kind of directedness or teleology to, um, to human thought, to, you know, trends in thought. Right? Trends in thought are more than simply, you know, um, efficient causal, right? Uh, there's a lot of uh, complexity to it. And go. All right, cool. Now let's try again. Let's go after this guy. Real quiet, like. Um. I mean, he said don't hurt anybody. He didn't say don't kill anybody. This still seems a little bit sketchy. Whatever, it's fine. Go to sleep. Also, not good for you. I think it's this. It's definitely not. Darn. <laughs> Can't, like, slap the horses and make them run away and scare people or... Uh, no, okay. We gotta do this the careful way again. Still more careful. Someone's patrolling, so I gotta head him off. Unless he's gonna start noticing bodies. Um, huh. I might throw a fire bottle near the horses. That'll definitely get them to scatter, but that'll also get everybody into a combat state, which means they're all shooty. And I don't want them to be all shooty, because then they'll shoot me. I don't like getting shot, unless I can avoid it. Um, I'm going to try and see into these tents. See if these people are asleep, or if they're just kind of sitting there, sharpening knives and whatever. Oh, wait, how is he not seeing the knocked out people? He's got a pattern, so I'm just going to wait here, wait for him to come out. I'll punch him. Yeah, that guy's awake. He's just sitting there. All right. Anyway, so let's sit and wait uh, and talk about some synchronicity stuff. So I do think that there is something, you know, teleologic, teleological. There is an end or directness to human thought. This can be something like preternatural, not natural in the sense that we, you know, moderns ordinarily think. Uh, is the shirt pattern being weird on the camera? Really messing with my camera. I got distracted. I'm getting distracted by that. I can see him over here. Oh no, that guy's gonna see me if I if I sneak past. Stay huh? hiding. Oop 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 oop. oop. Got this horse food, huh? Uh oh. Uh oh. I have to be sneaky, that's all. We're good. We're good. We're still good. Oh, that guy's sleeping. That's alright. He's going in the woods. Ah, oh, yes. Wander into the woods. Alright, well, they saw me. That's okay. Hogtie in time. There's like three of them. I think I can hogtie three people. Are they all even gonna bother, or...? There 
go. Never mind. Combat music aside, I think we're good. This is absurd. Cannot believe I'm getting away with this. Alright, here we go. Keep going. Keep going. One last guy. One last guy. I wonder where all my friends went. Alright, there we go. Done. I did it the correct way. No, Erica, this is, I'm pretty sure, the correct way, isn't it? This is how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to wander through, knock everybody out, take their stuff. Because, yeah, absolutely, look, because the, um... Yeah, the, the thing is sitting right here, next to them. It's in this chest, I think. Yeah, it's right here. So you really do have to either knock them out or kill them. They're knocked out. I, you know, choked them out. Oleander Sage, okay, that's not what I'm looking for. Light Feather, not what I'm looking for. Arrows, not what I'm looking for. What? It's not in this chest. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Chinupa and Sacred Items. That'll do it. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. They're not dead. They're knocked out. Because game mechanics. Alright, let's go. Is there anything else I can take from this camp? There's dynamite. Let's just grab some corn and go. Now, if I were to light the camp on fire after doing all that, then I would kill all of them. And I'm a little tempted. But I'm not going to do that. Um, that wouldn't be right. But they all just fell asleep all of a sudden, and uh, things uh, things disappeared from their camp. That's all. Anyway, um, so yeah, that worked out okay. It was kind of a mess, but it worked out. Um, so, the other... Um, so the possibility of synchronicity is that there is an innate um, teleology of uh, of human knowledge, right? Human knowledge will naturally, or not, not maybe not naturally, but preternaturally develop uh, towards the truth. And no matter where people are or what their circumstances are, then they're if they are if they are ordered towards the truth in general, then they're going to approach the truth in similar ways. Because, of course, they will, because we're all human beings and we all think in at least vaguely similar ways. Okay. Um, the strictly supernatural explanation for things like this, uh, for things like um, Confucianism having bearing incredible similarities to you know a lot of other classical Western thought around the same time period, um, is that it is... Uh, it is God preparing different parts of the world uh, for you, revelation. Thanks. I think. Yes. Um, Thank you. I'm very this sorry. is how a lot of theologians actually read synchronicity like even this. Or things, even read pagan philosophy in general. Things. People. The heart. Not anymore. Was anyone hurt? No one was killed. Well done. We well done. I wish my son knew such restraint. <laughs> yeah. My people owe you a great debt, and I'm giving you very little. But please, take this. We <laughs> believe it to be sacred. Thank you. Thank Chinese. you. Take those herbs I gave you, please. And most of all, I hope you can find peace within yourself. Yeah, so Kevin says, that's what I was thinking, intellectual preparation for revelation. Not so Very long interesting. Ago, I would have found weak and pathetic. Now I see as wise and thoughtful and sensible. I would love to help him, or at least stop Dutch pushing his son to do something real stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I, I tend to think um, of the three, 
the strictly natural option is, I think, the least plausible. Right. That it that just by crazy coincidence, yep. people thought similar things because, you know, people happen to think of them. And maybe it has to do with intellectual trends in different places, right? So common sources. But that is certainly not the case with Aristotle and Confucius. Um, to say that they have common intellectual Easy. trends is absurdity. You know, we know demonstrably that they don't. Um, do we want to go to the colonel or... Do we want to see... Uh, okay, do we want to go to the hanging of, uh, of Como Driscoll? Uh, because that's definitely worth doing. Or do we want to uh, continue the, the sort of quest line that we're on? What do you guys think? Uh, let me get some opinions in here while I, uh, while I continue talking. Um, so I tend to think it's a combination of the second two. Uh, in large part, I do think it is just that, that human knowledge seeks the truth, right? And there is something supernatural about that. There's something more than, more than merely natural about that. And we seek the truth because we are all seeking the truth, and we are and we're seeking something in common in a common way, right? That means that our actions are sort of co-guided. They're guided by the same principle. They're still moving in the in the same direction. So we got one vote for hanging. That's good. Uh, let's see if we have you know agreement. And uh, if nobody says otherwise, I think we'll go do that. Um, that'll be down here. Um, but otherwise, um, there also could, especially, especially, you know, uh, before Christ, right? Um, it's totally, all right, I got two votes for hanging. That's enough. Let's do it. Um, I, I think that that is a, uh, a good, sufficient explanation. Um, th there may well be an element of true supernatural, um, there we go, Carrie. Um, guidance to the philosophies of the world as a kind of like a, like uh, like I said, preparation for uh, preparation for revelation of uh, but sort of the Christian revelation, right? Something like that. Um, which has uh, which use which you know takes on a lot of the elements of uh, that that I, I think are very in common between uh, Confucianism and Aristotelianism. It's this communitarianism, right? And Again, by which I mean uh, existence of human beings as communal, as social animals, that sort of thing. Yeah, what's this? What do you want from me? Oh, okay. Sorry. Some guy. That's all. Yeah. All right. Well, stop threatening me, buddy. I'm gonna shoot you. All right. Let's move on. Hey there, Mister. Um. Get down in my face. Oh. Okay. Jesus. Um. But yeah, so it's this idea that we um, we exist as individuals, but in community, right? Our, we fundamentally are in community. We are fundamental parts of a community. Our relationships are part of who and what we are. And this is common to almost every element of the Western tradition, at least before the Enlightenment, which is kind of a hard break with the rest of Western tradition, but whatever. Um... You guys know my views on the Enlightenment, or at least most of it. Um, and it is uh, fundamentally Confucian. Yeah. Uh, this was this is very common throughout Confucianism. Um, which again, I didn't quite realize that there was that that uh, close a similarity, that close a, a um, um, conceptual connection. So that's really cool. Uh, that was actually really neat. Uh, what I thought was fascinating here about this in particular, I'm going to go to the cinematic. So I want to read a couple of things from the chapter here, um, where it talks about this this element of uh, of understanding community, right? understanding human beings as part of community, as fundamentally as being part of community. Um, and uh, this is this is the part that this is one of those uh, errors. That I noticed. Uh, Kevin says enlightenment, schmenlighten, schmeitenment, schmeitenment, enlightenment, schmeit. Okay, that'll do. Um, and this will really give you, uh, give why I think that and why 
this author is a bit off on some of the things that is uh, that is not his uh, area of specialization, being Confucianism, being Eastern, Eastern thought. Quote, This Confucian view is in sharp contrast with what has been the dominant view in Western philosophy for more than two millennia, that humans are metaphysically distinct and politically independent. Philosophers who agree about little else, from essentialists like Aristotle to existentialists like Simone de Beauvoir, okay, maybe, even her, not, not even quite, uh, have taken it for granted that reality must somehow consist of independent individuals. This fiction has some positive consequences. The belief that humans are born as free individuals who innately owe nothing to, another, to one another led to social contract theory. That's a benefit. The view that political power is justified by independent individuals reaching an agreement that respects the rights and interests of each, a view which is kind of explicitly denied by Plato, but whatever. Um, this helped provide a rationalization for respecting freedom of speech and religion, uh, etc. And then he goes on to cite people like Jean-Jacques Rousseau as representative of the Western tradition. What? This seems comical to me, um, because this is a incredible misrepresentation of the Western tradition, as far as I see it. Because, like I said, and as we all know, if we you know follow me, my discussions, and my channel, everyone in the Western tradition, <laughs> going back to Plato, to Aristotle, to the medieval scholastics, both Eastern and Western, and by Eastern and Western, I mean European, right? So Eastern Church, Western Church, um, as well as uh, even uh, even most uh, most of the Islamic and Jewish scholars throughout the Middle Ages that constitute part of the Western tradition, right? All of them saw human beings as fundamentally social animals. And so part of what we are is constituted by our relationships. Sorry. Um, right? Our relationships with one another and our place sort of within society. Right? This is... Seeing Confucianism as a break with the Western tradition, as separate from the Western tradition, in anything but historical accident, right? Having, you know, occurred over there rather than over here kind of thing. Is... Is I think a, a gross misunderstanding of the Western tradition. I mean, the only the only Western thinker I can think of who is that kind uh, of the only like major philosopher who I can think of in the West who is that kind of radical individualist um, would be maybe Ayn Rand, maybe Albert Camus, but even he sees it as a flaw or a fault. I guess Sartre and Beauvoir, to an extent, I can, I can, I can, I can see an argument being made that Sartre and Beauvoir uh, and some of the other existentialists uh, thought in this way, but that's that's a stretch. That's a real stretch. Even that. Um, this kind of, you know, um, radical independent individualism uh, exists. Honestly, really only in the imaginations of, oh, I should change clothes, shouldn't I? That's why. I'm hot. Morning. That's better. Um, this kind of radical, atomistic individualism does not exist in anywhere except in the minds of, uh, of, uh, you know, terrified collectivists who are afraid of individualism. Listen, you have to take this. Oh, okay. Well, that's real kind. You're the only one ever cruel to me. Once, once I've had a good life, don't you make no deals with the devil. You hear? Okay. I'll try to remember that. Can I, can I give you, like, more money or maybe an exorcism? Probably exorcism. Probably be the good thing to do. Anyway.
Yeah. Yes, Erica, prophetic advice. Yeah, there's, um... Man, are there a lot of deals with devils late, late in... Uh, among a lot of people in the gang, at various points, but especially late game. At least metaphorical, if not quite literal. Yeah, I can. I'm going into the... in here. Alright. Oh, wait, I should get guns. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Gun. Uh. Rolling block. Yeah. And Evans. I'll do it. Good. Okay. I just got a rifle off of my horse. I'm going hunting. Calm down. Anyway, let's go. Don't you worry about me. There you are. Here I am. Come on. Let's go. Let's go where? And why are you so riled up? Today is a great day, Arthur. Today is the day they are going to hang Colm O'Driscoll. Uh, so? Either they hang him or I shoot him. Oh, they are going to hang him. Yeah, and not before time. That boy's been on the gallows more than most. I wouldn't count anything until his neck's broke. Well, nor would I. Which is why, despite us being wanted men, we're going to attend the event ourselves. And follow him onto the scaffold? Well, let's hope not. But if I can let's see hope that not. son of a bitch breathe his last, oh, I think nice. I'd die a happy man. We are gonna disguise ourselves in this, in this. Yeah, okay. This is gonna work. There's no way this can go wrong. Okay. Come on. <clears throat> well, I guess I didn't need the fancy, uh, the fancy rifles. Well, don't we just look the part? We'll cut through the alley to get to the gallows. We keep our weapons holstered, our disguises on, and our wits about us. Mrs. Adler, might I say, being a fancy woman of Saint Denis suits you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd dress up like the Queen of Sheba if it meant seeing that son of a bitch swing. Colm hung me up. Nearly butchered me, and I don't mean I'm comfortable in this woolen coat. <laughs> you made it out of that predicament, as oh, I geez. remember, Mr. Morgan. My husband weren't so lucky. You lost your husband. I lost my darling Annabelle. That poor boy, Kieran. We've all lost something because of Comb. And that is why we will shepherd him to eternity. Amen to that. Now keep those fingers off those triggers, because we'll need cool heads and calm dispositions to see this done. Hmm. Practice what you preach, brother. Whatever do you mean? Are you going to keep your cool? Really? When you seem to lose it all it's so shame. often now. This Arthur, I don't, I'm fine. Questioning of yours? I miss the old Arthur. <laughs> don't we all? Hey, you two quit it. Y'all got a job to do. We're all in rough agreement about how we're doing it, as far as I can tell. Exactly. We'll get it done, all right. All right, then. Come on. We got a hanging to witness. Look here. Right. Don't the public love an execution? Hey. All right. Good. Now, you see that pair of assholes? Sure. They're Combs boys. Yes, I think so. What a surprise. I'm glad we're here. What are they pointing at? I don't know. We gotta follow them and find out. Yeah. Oh. Here comes somebody. <clears throat> Stay here. Don't do nothing. All right, well, here we go. Go brush that horse, officer. Yes, sir. The crowd came to see a show. We don't want to disappoint them. I guess they did miss their chance to see John swing by his neck. Hey. Hey. You know I wasn't going to let it come to that. Are you sure? I guess I don't know what I know no more. 
And I guess this isn't the time to question either my decisions or yours. Here and now, Como Driscoll's going to get his due. He's cutting in there. Screaming too, ladies. Sound like Micah. Let's go. Quiet. What's it look like? Bunch of cops. How many? Enough. Mm. So what do you think? Paul's up on the roof. Once he starts shooting, we have to have our wits about us and move fast. Yeah. I guess we faced worse than this before. Sure. Let's get to it. Yeah. Okay. Well. So... They got a guy up on the roof, overlooking the gallows. Find a way up there, on one of these verandas, through a building maybe, and get him. And do it silently. Well, obviously I'm gonna do it silently. I wanna see this bastard swing. Let's try going up, shall we? Need to get to the roof, let's go up the stairs, you right? Makes sense. Oh, Enjoy there's a ladder. Oh, hey, it's the art gallery. All right, well, this isn't where I needed to go, but okay. Apparently. Oh, I should have read it. I'll go back to Mrs. Adler. All right, well, good luck. I'm gonna go beat up a sniper. This will do it. Gallows, which way was it? Okay. Up. And let's go. Uh, so. Huh. Arcano. This is where you get it. is one such man. He has murdered, tortured, robbed, stolen, raped, and abused for a decade across five states, seemingly with impunity. There is Sadie. Today, justice catches up with him. <laughs> As well you may. I've been a bad man. Silence! These charges This are... is not a court where you shall hmm. be tried. This is a place where your sentence is to be carried out. And your Don't sentence, Colmo Driscoll, is that you are to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. This is not a task we take lightly. It is not a task we enjoy. <laughs> but it is a task we must carry out. If our civilization is to prosper, gentlemen, are we ready? Call Modrisco. May God, in His infinite wisdom, have mercy upon your soul. Oh man, he is terrified. Whenever you are ready. <laughs> Now you know how it feels to watch somebody you love die. Uh oh. You ruined my life! Okay, this is gonna be great. Okay, great. If you can hear me, shoot some of these old briskles. Oof. Uh, 
that it? Okay, that's it. That'll do it. Okay. Whew. Well, we there's a lot of them. Let's just get out of here. Go. And I get a very, very nice rifle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice. Very nice. Oh, we're going to stay in San Denis, but I guess not. Wanted to modify the new rifle, but okay. How you get on, Arthur? Well, you know, we saw the bastard hang okay, but... Hmm. The whole thing ain't going to save us. I guess that's one less thing to worry about. I guess, compared to the entire government, in the end... Como Driscoll didn't seem like such a worry. A letter came for you. Oh, okay. I know it's from that Mary. Mary? She ain't worth it, Arthur. Mm. Who is? My dear Arthur, you never showed up. And now, after looking at the newspapers, I understand why. I don't imagine you'll receive this letter, but I nonetheless must send it. Arthur. Oh, Arthur. I was just starting to dream the silliest and softest of dreams. I miss you, and I will always miss you. But I cannot live like that. And it seems you cannot live any other way. When I'm with you, the world makes sense. But when we are apart, I see clearly that your world is not a world from which one can escape. I'm so sorry for everything. For everything long ago and for starting up that business again. There's a good man within you, Arthur, but he is wrestling with a giant. And the giant wins time and again. You've broken my heart again. And I fear I have broken yours. And for that, I will never forgive myself. But you must let me go now. I enclose a ring you gave me many years ago. When we were both young. Not because I don't like it, but because I care for it far too much. And it reminds me too much of you. I hope one day you will find some people in love who can use this. For it kept me thinking of you all these years, and I hope by returning it to you, I can finally be free. Goodbye, Mary. Oh man, that is that is such a that is such a tragic, bitter love story. It does have something like a happy ending, though. We said with the ring. I hadn't thought of that. Forgotten about that. Yeah, there's there's something there's something nice about that coming. Eventually. Oh man. Man. Yeah. That was nice. That was good. Hi, Mary Beth. Okay, Arthur. Okay. <laughs> Reverend? Yeah. Hello, Morgan. All right. Well, let's keep on. Still got Micah. Get Eagle Flies. 
Um, but more pressingly, we have Captain Monroe. So let's go and talk to Captain Monroe. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. We do eventually have to, uh, talk to the Mayor of Santa Anita. Actually, hold on a minute. Um, once we're out of here, I want to check and see if that Carcano rifle is actually still, uh, if we still have that. And if we do, I'm probably going to want to go modify it, because that is probably my favorite long arm. Oops. Yeah, we do! Alright, well... Yeah, so that changes my plans a little bit. Um, Where's the closest gunsmith on the way? There's no gunsmith on the way. This isn't on the way, but let's go. Because that's kind of important. That's a phenomenal rifle, and I want to go and make it run. So we'll go do that. Then we'll head around. Over the other way. Hey, Arthur. How you doing? Been thinking more about Dutch and Eagle Flies. It can only end badly. Yeah, you ain't wrong. Alright, so let's head that way. Spurry. Yeah. Anyway. So for right now. Speaking of fancy new rifles. Um, there's another little passage. Oh, Jesus. Ah, God. Come on. We smell you out and easy. Done. God damn lunatics. Yep, lunatics. Anyway, I was about to tell a story about a rifle, but it's gonna have to wait a second. Oh, jeez. Alright. <clears throat> Meanwhile, before I read the story about the rifle, I do want to uh uh I wanna kinda of mention the um the, the interesting thing about how uh, how the author here I, I I hesitate to mention the author's name sort of in connection with the with the criticism I wanna I wanna bring because I don't wanna, you know, malign him because as far as I know, he he's a an accomplished scholar. He does he knows his stuff in his area. Which I guess I can I can mention it, so just don't you know don't think too lowly. Uh this is um um Brian Van Norden, that's the guy's name. Um and so this is the guy who uh, who wrote the the piece on Confucianism he was talking about, and who I think, uh, given that, critically misunderstood the sort of Western tradition. Okay, girl. Um, and I think it's a common it's a common enough occurrence, right, yep. where you have somebody who um, who leaves the Western tradition in general, or leaves you know any particular you know, particular part of it. Um, typically, this is you know somebody leaving Christianity or whatnot, but not necessarily. But, you know, leaving leaving their home tradition, leaving where they, the the sort of tradition that they grew up in and with, uh, and they leave it in part. I don't know if due to, um, I don't know if because of, but but um, but certainly without understanding it. Now, I don't want to assume that that's why, you know, he moved away from the, you know, from the classical Western tradition um, towards Confucianism, why he adopted this new belief system, that sort of thing. But um, it certainly is the case that he was not settled in, uh, in, yeah. He, he wasn't wasn't well read and well educated in the belief system that he was leaving. Right? And we find this to be all Hello, too sir. common, I think. Hey, um, 
where you know people who are going to leave a belief system and try to and try and find a new one move away from what they had believed before and move on to something else, typically you find that these are people who don't know very much and aren't interested in finding out very much about the about what it is that they are leaving behind. I'm wanted dead or alive. I really hope this doesn't go predictably when I walk into the gunsmith. Never listen to me. Like talking to a goddamn wall. Uh oh, what's going on here? I don't want you to work in that mine no more, okay? Would you rather go back to thieving? Hmm? I'm providing for my right? family. That's well, quite no, an I'm not putting on a show for the whole town. Okay. Is there a man in this town who ain't a moron? Hmm, I don't know, He's maybe. He's just scared. Good job's hard to find. A good job? Caking your lungs for a couple of dollars a week? Scared or not, he's gonna ruin us both. That idiot. I love him and I hate him. Every day, covered in soot, coughing half the night. <laughs> Does he really think Jameson or any of the others give a damn whether he lives or dies? <laughs> it ain't so bad being wanted dead or alive. And yeah, Kevin, that's a perfect Welcome example. As an absolutely perfect what example can I help you with? Um, of what I'm talking about. It's the whole, I went to Catholic school for 12 years thing. Um, I, uh, I sort of... Um, I, uh, I saw a half-joking um, comparison You've there. kept that weapon looking as nice um, as the day you bought it. Uh, not too long ago that uh, that Martin you know, Luther was the first um, really was the first um, I went to Catholic school so I know or that, that sort of thing you won't know around. how you managed without this um, yeah that is uh, that is exactly the kind of thing that, that yeah that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about you know uh, how do we want to? I don't like brown steel. With some engraving. What do you think? Blue? Brass? How about, how about our uh, varnish? Feel something like dark. Ooh, no. Well, that looks great. Let's go with a light and dark. If you are interested, I do offer bathing services here. Let's go with walnut. And let's go with... Wow, oh, that looks good. That looks real good. What? <laughs> That's not might be good. Walnut looks great. Chocolate. Eh, pebble. Nah. Let's go with walnut. Walnut and walnut. I like it. You will not find one piece out of place, that looks I good. assure you. What about metals? I'm gonna go with black or blue. Uh, let's go with blue. Let's go with black for everything. Let's see how it looks. I think it'll look pretty good. Uh, except for this. Let's go with silver. Trigger. Black? Or blue. If you want to stay another night, let's go the black seal. Right. It's still available for you. That is a smart looking rifle. Engravings. Mm, it's a little too intricate. Too much. It's a little bit good. Art Nouveau. Yeah, I dig it. Inlay. Gold, silver. Just about every gun in this town came out of my store. Not sure I've kept the town safe, but I definitely kept it armed. What do you think, gold or silver? It's a tough call. The gold. Yeah, gold. Let's do it. That looks spectacular. I love it. Wonderful. Now that is a nice new rifle. Oh, I hear there was a big shootout with the Murphy gang in the caves at Eva Island. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Who would have thought? Alright, let's move on. 
Right, we've got our wonderful new rifle. Let's get to Captain Monroe. All right, let's get moving. Is uh oh, it's wanted dead or alive temperature out. I can't tell if I'm hot or cold. Okay, 67 degrees. Okay, it's nice. Now, it won't be forever, so I'm probably going to have to keep an eye on that. Stop that. Almost ran into somebody. Oh, that's not good. Ow. Okay, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry, Moose. Let's go. Sorry about that, Moose. Oh, poor Moose. Poor Moose. Oh, poor Moose. All right. Uh, now that that's done, over and done with, let's uh, take a nice long ride. All right, parkour. Horse parkour. That's not a good idea. Oh, jeez. Um, Alright, so... This is my rifle story. And again, it's from... Uh, it's from Van Norden's uh, text here. And this is... This is one of those mistakes that is... Not a big deal like the other one. The other one is a is a wild mischaracterization of... Uh, of the entirety of the Western tradition. That's kind of a big deal. And it's incredibly relevant to the rest of the uh, article. This is just an example where he's kind of talking about... Oh, wait, let's do this. What was that? Oh. Uh, yeah. This one. He was past help, apparently. On, he had mauled by a wolf. Yeah. See, so I think, uh, I think Kevin, I think you were right. It could have been worse than my arm. That could have been ha that could very well have been Arthur. Um, Hamish hadn't been there to help. Anyway. Hey, partner. Howdy. All right, let's go back to cinematic. And let me tell me this. Tell this uh, this absolutely hilarious uh, little bit. Quote. Does my quote right to keep and bear arms? End quote. Entail that I can own a semi-automatic rifle that can fire sixty rounds a minute. Sixty rounds a minute. Hmm? I um, I'm pretty sure that's roughly the rate of fire of that Carcano rifle, which is bolt action, by the way, bolt action and clip fed, not magazine fed. Clip fed. I don't think he knows that. Uh, I agree, Eric. I I would I, I yes, you can own a McNuke if you want. The uh the the um. The problem for society around you occurs when you use it against somebody, not when you own it. Um, this is, first of all, just a patent absurdity that he would use this as an example, right? As an example of, um, of you know, the conflict between individualism and uh, and one's place in, in you know, um, social interaction. Um, which, you know, first of all, there's patent absurdities to this, to the examples that he gives. Um, but then also, 
<laughs> also, 60 rounds a minute. Does he know does he not know how like does he not know how time works? That means one round per second. That is an atrociously low rate of fire. Like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I, I really don't. The, first of all, this was this was written down by somebody, by an intelligent person. This was edited by several people. There was a team of editors for this book. None of whom thought, hmm, 60 per minute of something. Um, you know what else passes at 60 per minute? Seconds. Oh, I, <laughs> oh man. Um, uh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I don't know what this is, but I want to look. I want to check it out. But yeah, no, yeah. 60, 60 rounds per minute is is almost comically slow. Like I said, that is roughly the rate of fire of this Carcano, which again is a which is a clip fed bolt action rifle. That's way slower than the Evans repeat. You know what? I kind of want to get a minute on the clock, just to see how long, including reloads, it takes me to fire off 60 rounds. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Here it is. It's for the meme. Let's do it. All right. Let me open up the timer. No, that's not timer. That's my, That's the weather. How do I... Okay, maybe I won't do this. What the hell is my clock? There it is, clock. Great. That took me too long. Yeah, maybe it meant howitzer cannons, which has a slower rate of fire than 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 sixty. Right? So that that's that's you know, that's understandable that, that it would be that, right? Um He's talking about a semi automatic rifle though. And there aren't many of those in in this game, so I can't exp I can't really go with that. But this is a semi-automatic pistol with a ten-round clip, and I mean clip, not magazine. That's a difference. All right. Okay. Cool. So, timer zero. Se oh wow, that's in that's invisible. I'll have you'll have to trust me. All right. Ready, set, go. Oh, the timer didn't start. I need a stopwatch, not a timer. All right, let's try this again. Se 60 rounds. Ready, three, two, one, go. Yeah, that was five seconds. Six seconds, including the reload. Halfway there at 18 seconds. Oh, I can fire from the hip, too? Oof. And... 39 seconds. Okay. 39 seconds for 60 rounds. In a gun that actually existed in 1899, with a decently realistic rate of fire, with a decent realistic reload speed. <laughs> oh man, it's from over a hundred years ago. This is from 121 years ago, uh, from a from a gun that was not new at the time. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's pretend just for a moment this guy knows what he's talking about. Just now, maybe. Okay, fine. Not everybody knows what they're talking about with firearms. Okay, fair enough. I don't know much of what I'm talking about with firearms. I'm not a gun expert, right? But come on. It's really easy to see that f that 60 rounds per minute is not is not a high rate of fire by any stretch of the imagination. Any intelligent person should know better than that. That's that should be embarrassing. Anyway, I'm going to be making fun of that like crazy in class. And uh and uh, maybe maybe somebody will understand why I'm laughing uproariously uh, rather than... Uh, oh, I forgot to switch ammo. 
There we go. Let's go front. It's just better. There we go. Anyway, that was uh, that was just a little bit of extra patent absurdity. This article, this chapter we read. I just thought that was worth sharing. That was worth talking about because it's just. It's just such a hilarious oversight that, I mean, it's worth noting that, of course, the target audience for this book, um, which is, you know, university students and uh, and other academics, probably, this is a lot of dynamite, um, you know, academics are probably, are not exactly the most, um, the most gun savvy of people. So, okay, maybe he would expect that his audience wouldn't wouldn't quite catch the mistake, wouldn't quite catch the error, or wouldn't really care, but, you know, you'd think that someone editing it would have realized that, that 60 rounds per minute is is comically slow. I don't know. I don't know. This is just a point, this is something I wanted to point out that, that it's a, it's an instance of, uh, of the, uh, the bubble of, it, of the bubble, you know, the bubble in general of of academia, the bubble of um, of Urbania, right? The, the sort of cosm urban cosmopolitan bubble, uh, that kind of thing, right? Where, you know, you would think that somebody would get it. <laughs> Kevin says maybe college folks uh, shoot slow on a kind of nerves, maybe. Maybe. You'd think that would give him, you know, an itchier trigger finger. The whole thing. You've seen that, um, uh, that, that clip about the guy that's, uh, talking about how his, how his, uh, pistol is unreliable and how he just, like, empties a, uh, empties a 10 round mag in, like, a second from, um, I forget what pistol it was. Just yelling in a British accent about it being unreliable, that kind of thing. That was, uh, no, no, Arthur, stop it. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. It, 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 it's hilarious to me. Like, know this. Anyone should be able to figure this out. Uh, uh, hey, binoculars. I bet this is a hint that we should look through binoculars. Huh. That's pretty. I don't know what we're supposed to be looking at. There's a star. Oh, what? Uh oh. Where'd the wolves go? That was weird. Okay. Never mind. No wolves. Ow. Why did... Arthur, why'd you do that? Anyway. Alright, let's, let's move on. Search through this place. There's not much here. Should I blow up the basement? I really want to blow up the basement, but I think this is someone's house, so I don't want to do that. We've already, you know, stolen a few things. Kind of want to just, you know, shoot around in that basement. What in the hell? Listen, that should not have happened. This is ridiculous. No. Well, what the hell was that? First of all. Alright. Okay. Anyway, that was a mess. 
Am I cold? Probably cold. Here. Good chance. Alright, let's get out of here. Hopefully yep. that's not gonna be a problem again. Wolves. If it is, I don't know what to do about that. I guess pistol. Pistol is probably the best way to deal with a pack of wolves, I think. Oh my gosh. First parkour, then wolves again. Really, this is all just like... This whole stream is just deja vu. Repeatedly. I keep doing the same damn things over it. Alright, moving on. Moving right along. more wolves are there, there? We go. I don't know what I ran over but I'm gonna grab it the squirrel that was a bird why did I run over a bird Weird. let's go girl now let's move on Yeah, Kevin, the damn spicy puppies keep getting me. Anyway, heading up towards the reservation. Hey there, mister. This is much more of a problem as we keep going. Oh my gosh. So that was a thing. You know, the the, uh, the 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 sixty rounds per minute story just like that 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 just struck me as hilarious when I read it, and I needed to share it because I don't know I, I don't know I'm, most of my students are very are uh, are pretty urban. You know they're in that they're kind of in that bubble, <clears throat> and so I don't know if it'll strike them as quite so hilarious. I hope so. I hope they realize that that was dumb. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely going to have to point out uh, the issue with uh, the other issue, because the other issue is actually more important. You know, uh, that, you know, uh, Van Orden doesn't exactly understand, uh, or at least doesn't seem to understand. Uh, ooh, what's this? Oh, right, the hobbit hole. Um, yeah, Van Orden doesn't seem to understand the, uh, the tradition he rejects. That being this, uh, the the you know the the Western tradition that he's talking about, which he sees as this kind of uh, this atomized individualism, which, again, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist outside. Maybe a couple of the existentialists, yeah. maybe, maybe Sartre, maybe Beauvoir, maybe Camus. But even Camus is starting to get to the point where he rejects it. He's like, count. He's, he's saying, yes, it exists, but it's a problem. And maybe Ayn Rand. Other than that, it exists in the fever dreams of collectivists who want to, you know, malign, uh, want to malign individualists. Right? Broadly speaking, individualists, because individual individualism and 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 communitarianism, let's say, right, existing together as a society and existing in relationship to one another and all that stuff. These are not contraries to any degree. Um. <laughs> Kevin says I'm a simple man regarding humor, but Arthur's greetings always make me nose laugh. You mean exhale sharply, kind of thing? Um, because yeah, I. Hi there, Mister. <laughs> Love it. I need to start emulating these as I'm walking around, especially in like, um, especially around USF campus. And if I start wearing a Wearing as a mask my uh, bandana and cowboy hat. I've really thought about doing that for a while. Uh, that could be a lot of fun. Just tip the hat. Hi there, Mister. That'd be a lot of. That'd be a good time. That has a, that has potential. That has entertainment potential like crazy. Hello. 
Here I am, as promised. Captain Monroe. Of course. Chief's going out trying to find medifications. It's quite a business. Yes. Thought we were through with all of this. Well, we are, mostly. Colonel Favors seems to think the natives have broken some promise they never made, and apparently he's punishing them by withholding vaccines sent down by the federal government. Really? Yeah. I was supposed to oversee the administration of vaccines. Now I hear the wagon's been diverted. Why would he do such a thing? <sighs> to be honest, I truly don't he's know. A dick. They say he didn't have Revenge. a very good war, no. so maybe he's trying to start another one. Is that what you think? I'm trying to find out. And he knows I'm trying to find out. He'd love to provoke me almost as much as he'd love to provoke <laughs> these poor bastards. Meaning? <sighs> Meaning that despite the fact that I think he's a horse's ass, he knows I think that. So we're just stuck here trying to make the best of things. This is the best of things. Children dying of diseases. No. This is awful. Where is this wagon? Where can we find it? I can show you. It's supposed to be heading to a PD after coming up through Valentine, but it's been diverted south instead. Come on, Captain Monroe. M Mr. Morgan, we must act with due caution. Oh, we shall. We surely shall. Now come. Hmm. Okay. I think I know a spot where we should be able to intercept it. Yeah, this doesn't There's seem no like due caution. This seems like um Arthur reacting so too far to the other thing. side against Dutch. He you knows you're up here helping these people. Yes. And no. He knows I'm here to produce a report on the situation. I was sent down from the north after all and as he's news of unrest in the region. But I think my presence might be making things worse. What do you mean? I worry he's taking some of these actions more to protect himself now. Hmm. If he can incite more retaliation, maybe he can prove a stronger defense. Well, like destroying that shrine. Yes. And taking their horses. I mean, I don't know if he personally sanctioned any of this or not. This is the other problem. There's a culture now in his regiment. Rot has traveled down the trunk. Okay. Well, just show me where to find this. So it does sound like the uh medicine for it. It sounds like desecrating the shrine was uh, Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Was the army. Not, I must uh, ask you please not equal be flies. discreet. We really cannot afford more conflict. But even still, still, it's not—it's not certain. You know. between Rain's Falls and Colonel Favors. I understand. So I should drop the wagon back at the reservation. Oh no, 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 no! You only need to commandeer the back seat. Stealing those and an army wagon will only make matters much worse. Okay. You know, Favors has many flaws, but I don't believe he's callous. More an insecure man at the end of his career, trying to cling on to something that's already gone. <laughs> He fought for the Union That's in familiar. The war. His record was considered far from illustrious. A failed man is often the most dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, that's real familiar. For basically the whole gang. Yeah, and talk about synchronicity. Yeah, this is just another instance of, uh, of... Hey, right. this is surreptitiously this is about Dutch. Thinking. Let's get up this way. Sure. There's a nice vantage point up at the top here. Oh, geez. Oh, I can't unscope this rifle. Okay, that's that's going to be a problem. Leave the horses back a bit. We'll have a good view over the road from this ledge. The wagon should come along this way. Okay. You're a good man, Mr. Morgan, but I fear this task to be a fool's errand. Well, firstly, I'm a long way from a good man. Secondly, <laughs> fool's errands are yeah. my favorite kind of work. Fair enough. In that case, 
I can see we shall be great friends. <laughs> May I ask you a question? Of course. Why don't you just tell all the folk up in Washington what kind of an idiot Colonel Favors is and save us all a lot of bother? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the government doesn't work quite like that. If you say no. so. There. I think that's the wagon. All right. Get yourself out of here. Just remember to keep it clean, understand me? Don't worry, I'm as clean as they come. All I do is clean. Well, good luck. I'll meet you back at the reservation. Try not to get yourself killed, Mr. Morgan. No, no, I, I can't promise. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, I should have realized that. Okay. I'm gonna go go ahead and fail this mission so I can start it over. Yeah. Whee! Yep. Come on, go. Let me let me die. There we go. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, that was the perfect ending of that. Just topple, topple, top of blank screen. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Oh, let's try this again. I forgot. Arthur's trying to turn over a new leaf and not shoot people in the head so much. All right, let's uh, let's do that. Okay, then, girl. Oh God. Yep. Let's hold them up and try to rob them. Oh yeah, let's not hey, be don't obvious. Darn it. Bye. I'm gonna go fail. Let's try again. I have to threaten, but not pull my gun on them. Oh my gosh. The robbery mechanics in this game. I'll tell you what. It's a little bit finicky. Still take out our rifle just in case they get all touchy. Hey, don't get too close to this one. Hold it right there. Whoa, you better put that down right now. Do you want to get shot? Is that it? What the hell? Why am I using that? There. Bowser. That's it. Shoot that bastard already. This will work. This is the dumbest solution I've ever seen. But it's doing. I think this will work, right? What in the hell? There. Okay, we're good, I think. What in the hell? Get down!
just gonna stand still, because... Buddy. Buddy, please. Here's how we solve this problem. Okay. Let's do this right. He's not even shooting me with marshmallows. He's shooting marshmallows at the trees around me. That is ridiculous. All right, let's let's do this right, right and proper. Hey, you keep your kid. Hold her up. That's it. Shoot that bastard already. Hold ah! in, man. Time for you. Why do I keep switching weapons? You're up against the U.S. Army. I'm just gonna steal it. Goodbye. You can't keep up with your own wagon, you idiots. Get out. Get out of here. Here we go. Let's go. This will work. <laughs> I wonder if this is how I was supposed to do this. Let's go this way. It's probably not how I was supposed to do this, but it might work. Good, right? Oh, my horse is way out of range. This is fine. Oh gosh. Okay, I didn't. I also didn't intend this. Okay, that uh, we're fine. Right. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Some medicines. There. This will do it. Still need my horse. Yes, Kylie. Meme of burning room with guy, or I think it's a dog. Isn't it a dog saying everything is fine? This is fine. Come on. Come on, moose. Where the hell's moose? Oh, they're still shooting at moose. Oh no. No, I'm just gonna go. I keep whistling. I just got bit by a snake or something. That's weird. Oh, they're shooting me. Okay, great. I'm just gonna jog there. Anyway. 
Kevin says it's like the sicker he gets, the more reckless he is with judgment on distance, speed, obstacles, lassos, guys standing directly in front of him, firing pistols. Basically everything, really. Oh, here they come. Here they're coming. I wanted to shoot the guy, but I don't. Come on, Moose. From experience, I have no idea how he's whistling with a mask on like that. That seems silly. It seems absurd. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is actually... I think, Kevin, Yeah, I think you're spot on. This is 100% accurate to... Um, I think it might just be you. I'm not uh, seeing any lag stuff on um, either monitor. Any of my three, uh, three images of this. Oh, that could be. Um, yeah, Foundry, I know, takes a lot of computing power, so that could be why. Not again. Darn it. I lost Moose. I'll find her. <sighs> Alright, whatever. Let's keep going. Let's keep up our jog. All the way back to the reservation. How much farther is this? I think it's almost here. You guy's chasing me directly here, but whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. How are you, Chief? Hey, mister. Really hope he doesn't come in here and start shooting, because I can't pull out guns in here. Captain Monroe. Oh my I got gosh. the medicine. Oh, wonderful. That's great news, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, well, don't worry. It, uh, it didn't go too bad. Oh, I'll have to take your word for that. We could both swing for this. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I'm a little past caring about hanging, Monroe. Maybe. I just hope Colonel Favors thinks he was robbed by bandits and not... Oh, no, I'm still a bandit. There ain't no doubt about that. And it's true. Of course. Well, I better get to work. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Bandit or not, this was a good thing. Maybe it'll get us both killed, but it had to be done. I hope so. Okay. Well, that was awful. A big old oopsie. All right, let's see. Probably do one more major thing before we wrap up. What? One more thing for Hamish. Um, or for Trelawney. That was the thing for Trelawney. Let's go meet up with Hamish. Let's go meet with Hamish. Right. Another hunt, I think. Alright. So while we're on our way, there's another thing I kind of wanted to chat about, and this came to mind uh, this week. Um, so I was reminded, uh, I was reminded vaguely, because um, last week I rewatched Shrek and Shrek 2 for class. Shrek I rewatched for class, Shrek 2 I rewatched because it's good. <laughs> um... And I was reminded of the Big Bad Wolf. Okay. So. Uh, and I was reminded of the, um... Hey, mister. The, the some manner of, uh... Controversy these days. With how the, uh, yeah. Fairy Godmother refers to the Big Bad Wolf in Rack 2. Um... And when, uh, it's when Harold, uh, when King Harold is in, uh, her, her, like, you know, magic limo. And it's, and describes how, uh, when Prince Charming got to Fiona's room in the tallest room in the tallest tower, or whatever, <clears throat> Dragon's Castle, and he finds there a gender-confused wolf, uh, instead of his princess, and how, you know, some people today are a little bit upset by the phrasing, uh, cause, hey there, mister. you know. Um, and I am 
I am just drawn inexorably. Oops, wrong thing. I'm drawn inexorably to the symbolism of all this because it's so, so, so closely related to, um, to everything controversial about uh, J.K. Rowling right now. For a parallel example, is that a bear? That's yeah, a bear. Let's keep going. Yep. Yeah. All right, girl. Uh, and so J.K. Rowling is getting getting in trouble with um, the 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 uh, the T of the LGBTQ uh, plus etc. folks, um, because she is uh, she has been. Um, more or less, she's been accused of being a trans-exclusionary radical feminist, right? So she still holds the feminist line, but rejecting um, the trans element of uh, of the the latest alphabet soup, right? Okay, so fair enough. Uh, there's the added note, of course, that not only is she rejecting trans issues, but that her latest book is being accused of being transphobic, like specifically and intentionally, and in its core plot. Because it's about a murderer who dresses up as a woman in order to trick, in order to lure women into a false sense of security and murder them. It's a true, it's a uh, like a crime novel kind of thing, as I understand it. At least I haven't actually. I mean, I don't think it's out yet, so I obviously haven't read it. Hey, partner! Yeah, but this has been the hype. This has been the the, yeah. the hullabaloo about it. And this is hilarious because it's basically the same issue that we see with the big bad wolf. Because that's literally the story of the big bad wolf. And it's this this incredible parallelism of the fairy godmother, um, who herself is a kind of um, you know the the powerful working woman single mother with the uh, a kind of feminist icon who is who is now catching heat for being trans exclusionary, and talks about the big bad wolf being a being gender confused because the big bad wolf. His, again, his, at least in most versions of the fairy tale, his shtick is disguising himself as Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother so he can eat her. It's almost precisely a, a symbolic retelling of this same kind of story that Rowling is in trouble for wanting to tell. It is, it is, again, another one of these these hilarious little parallelisms that, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, not quite 20 years ago, but close, close enough, you know, 17, 18 years ago, um, it was just a legitimately funny joke, right? Some gender-confused wolf. Because, yeah, the, 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 um, there's no gender confusion, per se, in the actual fairy tale, right? That's not what it's about. It's not about, you know, trans it's not about a trans wolf it's about a wolf that uses a female dis disguise to um uh, to trick a you know um, i think a young girl uh in in like the, the uh, traditional versions of the fairy tale right I, I i wouldn't say young woman but i would say a girl uh into into letting him eat her right it's being a predator this is the Symbolically and typologically, it's exactly the same story. I thought that was neat. That was a neat little parallel. Just a moment. Hamish, Arthur, come on in. So, how are you keeping out here? Ah, keeping fine, thank you. So it's all right then, is it? Living out here. Away from civilization? <laughs> civilization? Yeah, I saw what civilization and industrial advancement will get you in the war. Hmm. Progress, well, it ain't always progress. Besides, I ain't lonely up here. I got company. Well, I ain't company. Come look at these. Remember catching that? <sighs> I do. <laughs> nice. I know you ain't forgot about him. Oh, I still see him in my dreams. Hmm. Yeah, I got the whole of nature up here. 
and I'm going to make the most of it, as long as there still is some. Whoa. They weren't lying. What's that? Right there by the outhouse. Look at the size of that boar. Holy hell. Oh my God. I saw some cattle gourd the other day, but I didn't think it was possible. Let's go take care of it. Okay. Damn, I thought I got him. Pursue. I'll grab the mounts. Whoa, Pete. Okay. I like cast iron, no kidding. Uh, let's go with a shotgun. Damn it. Saw where he went, so let's just go after. That's good. I'm afraid of <clears throat> Darn. Don't worry. Uh -huh. Tracks go this way. Come on. Yep. You see that thing? It's as big as a buffalo. And fast, too. Yeah, but we'll get him. He came through here, all right. Wait, Erica, what about my pants? I'm confused. That came in shortly after I said it, I'm sure. Um, been across here twice. Well, just again, do. because I, uh, well, he's been up this you know, there's a slight delay, right. so what about my pants? This one in front of us, but I can't tell which tracks is fresher. Let's split up. You go up, and I'll go onwards. Okay. okay. Good luck to you, sir. Pia! Come on, view! Oh, it's already blown up. Oh, what is that? Is that it? Did we? What's that? Oh, no, that's a gourd wolf. Oh, wow. Okay. That looks gourd. Hi, <sighs> Blizzard Peak. Uh oh. Damn it. Good to hear from you. Welcome, welcome to the stream. We don't have too much time left. We're only going to be out here for another, uh, another uh, 15 minutes or so. But, welcome Shit. anyway. Oh, there we go. Alright, come on, let's go. Kylie, you might want to wait another, like, five minutes. Because this quest is about to resolve itself. Oh, there we go. There we go. Jesus, no. Uh-oh. God. What did I say? I got thrown and the bastard hog got me. Take a bill for me, would you? And he's a good horse. He may be stubborn, <laughs> but he's strong. <laughs> Amos. Jesus. We got him, old man. I'm gonna take your hat too, man. Let's take this trophy, huh? Yep, we're taking Buell. We're definitely taking Buell. 
Can I skin this thing? No, I can't. Move him off of the... And... Move. Move. I can't. Alright. Come on now. Come on, Buell. Let's get going. Come on, Buell. Let's go. Alright. Well, there's that. And yes, Kevin, Django Fett moment. It's just that, uh, unlike Mace Windu, uh, thankfully for me, um, the giant hog is not capable of, uh, of blocking my bullets. No lightsabers for a giant hog. So let's get ourselves to... Actually, no, this is the closer one. Let's get ourselves to a stable so we can staple up... Um, our, uh, parent horse and, uh... Keep fuel. So um, this might mean that we have to um, we have to uh, sell off one of our horses. Uh, so and I don't know which one, uh, but we'll see. Um, I'll have to look through them and uh, we'll kind of talk about it. Uh, Kylie, before you go, if you have any input as to which of our horses, if you remember them, uh, that might be best to sell, uh, let me know. Otherwise, have a good night. See you next time. So we're definitely going in that direction. Uh, so we're going in that direction generally. I think otherwise the stable is full. But I'm definitely keeping Buell. Gotta uh, got honor Hamish for that. Probably honestly gonna ride Buell through the rest of it. He's a damn good horse. Uh, plus, you know, Sentiment. Hey, Mister. Calm down there, man. That guy was not, not very happy about my existence. Yeah, so maybe one of the older ones. We'll look through. We'll look through. Um, you're right. We did. We gave away Arthur too. Um, so we'll uh, we'll look through. Maybe one of the older horses and uh, keep some of the newer ones. We'll we'll take a look. Buell is a nice horse, though. Look at that. And we've already bonded. That's good. Yeah, okay, boy. All right. Anyway, so yeah, those are some thoughts that I was having. Uh, I I just thought that this was a this was a fascinating case of of I mean. I think that neither really, neither, um, you know, despite despite what what uh, even even J.K. Rowling said about um, trans issues that have made people um, made people upset with her about it, right? Even despite that, the 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 book, as I understand it, is not about is not about uh, transgenders, transgender people, right? people who are people who you know, actually have gender dysphoria. It's about uh, it's about a predator who uses a disguise, like uh, this kind of disguise, uh, as a um, as a kind of bait, right? as a as a uh, infiltration method, you know. Which is exactly the story of the big bad wolf. You know, it's the whole wolf in sheep's clothing thing. That's that's the fairy tale. Um, not only is it that the uh, the fairy tale, but then we also, you know, this is. Remember you. It's 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 Best even similar with uh, go, with huh? um, All right, take a look. Uh, with you know fairy godmother oh, getting. I don't know if canceled. That's probably not the right way of saying it. But but fairy godmother is getting like the character of fairy godmother, and even the movie of Shrek too, which there does not is. deserve to be maligned at Shame all because it's phenomenal. It um, this must be an heirloom, huh? And there we go. Um, all this is getting maligned. Um, oh, by the way, I got Catherine Bra Braithwaite's brooch, which I could sell, but I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't need okay. bourbon. All right, do this. Um, 
Plans, but yeah, it's um, it's not like you know either of these, right? The original joke, nor um, nor as I understand it, like it said, um, Rowling's novel are intended to, to even directly address the trans issue. It's it's directly it's intended to directly address um, you know, the chaos sown by uh, by surreptitious people using deception uh, to perpetrate their crimes. That's the whole theme. That's the whole idea. Because of that, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's. But because there is this issue now, and there is uh, an identity that goes along with. Uh, there is an identity to object to all this, and because that that identity is um, is very concerned with itself, is very concerned with its with the markers of its identity, then you know there's going to be um, there's going to be controversies having to do with it. Hey, Dar. Hi. Hello. Welcome. How's welcome. 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 Uh, I'm stable. Just don't have any space right now. All right. Uh, I would get little Debbie. Hey, if you ain't got the yeah, waffles. Price, I can't give you the full price. The Oreo. Ooh, Oreo is a very nice horse. You don't look so good. You worry about your horse. The workhorse, really? That kind of stats? Oh, gosh. Raft and race. Let's sell waffles. Because I like little Debbie. Yeah, let, let's sell waffles. See you later, waffles. You might be a hey, Buell. A uh, moose. Hey, moose. Alright, Buell. Saddle up. I'll get that done for you. Great, see what we got. Um. Real fine saddles here. Oh, that's nice. Thirty-seven dollars. That's worth it, right? It's not. The uh, good natural and chestnut. That looks perfect on Excellent Buell. That choice, looks so good sir. on Buell. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. All right, how about what that bedroll? That thing is. You can't have too much with you out in the wilderness. There. Let's do that. That's Thanks fine. for your business. It's ugly. All right, that'll be fine. That, that'll be fine. Blanket. It's better to equip yourself and not need it than no, the other. We're way okay. Around. We're okay otherwise. That'll do it. Uh, well, actually, no. Let's go saddlebags because that thing's ugly. Upgraded. You can't have too much with you out in the wilderness. Let's go with. Uh, it's not. You must this. be a connoisseur. All right. Good. Okay, so let's go with Buell. Goodbye now, and bring that horse back anytime. All right. Okay, well, we're just about out of time. Um, not too much left to do here. Um, we have a few things going on. Uh, I want to check in with that mayor, with the mayor of San Denis, come nighttime. There's another quest he has for us having to do with some sketchy things because, of course, he's a corrupt politician. What else do you expect, uh, especially in a town like Saint Denis? So um, that'll have to be for next time. We'll do that. We'll do the uh, whatever it is, the thing for Trelawney. I cannot for the life of me remember what it is. Um, and then we will help Eagle Flies, I guess. Um, uh, that'll about wrap it up. We are we are almost completely explored the map. There's probably some things here and there that I haven't happened to cross, but that's okay. At some point, we will do a, like a full map exploration, probably in the epilogue, because there's time and uh, reasons to stuff going on. So, all right. Well, I think that'll wrap it up for tonight. So, uh, thank you all for stopping by. Um, unfortunate that uh, some of you guys who just jumped in, just joined in, I uh, usually wrap around midnight Eastern time. Um, so, so you guys know, I, um, 
I stream Mass Effect. We're currently going through Mass Effect 2 uh, on Monday nights. Uh, that is, again, 9 to midnight Eastern Standard Time. And we do Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, every Thursday night. Same thing, 9 to midnight Eastern Standard. Uh, so you're welcome to stop uh, stop by again. I also welcome to, to uh, check out some of my other uh, some of my other videos. Some of the other stuff of, of uh, some of the other stuff I've talked about are uh, I also discuss in some of my other videos. So um, I welcome you to stick around, subscribe if you're interested, and uh, check out what else I have to offer. Um, I've got more things coming. Uh, I like I said, I have some things planned for. A video about Mass Effect and about um, about humanism and racism, neat things like this, uh, and how humanism just sort of turns into racism once it uh, once the our scope gets large enough, things like that. That should be interesting. Um, I also have uh, some things looking forward to another reading group series with this one. This would be William Cavanaugh's The Myth of Religious Violence. If you can see anything, phenomenal book. Love it very much. I'm looking forward to doing a uh, doing a read through on stream, talking about it with you guys. Um, so let me know if and when you might like to participate in such a thing. If I do want to, do, if we do want to do like a have me just do a reading and then we talk about it, right? that sort of thing. I'd be open to you know whatever new formatting we want to do for the reading groups, whatever we want to do. Um, that and of course probably continuing the uh, the the uh, Plato's Republic series should be very good. All right. Like I said, thank you for stopping by, and I will see all of you next time. See you Monday, or see you when I see you. Bye-bye.